Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Zara of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel, all who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today is Saturday, so therefore there is a book review today, which I am so excited about. So this is a book I read, oh God, when did I read this book? Back in January, um, right before we did our Jonah Bible study, and um, I was so excited to read this book. Now, I did get this book... Um, for a view from B&H Books through their blogging program. I'll leave a link down below for you guys if you're interested in checking out their blogging program. It's really, really cool. They have Bible studies. They have Bibles. They have um, books for kids, books for teens, like really great stuff, which I recommend. But um, the book we'll be discussing today is called Running for Mercy by Anthony J. Carter. It is Jonah and the Surprising Story of God's Unstoppable Grace. So I read this back in January. I gave it five stars. It is amazing. It's one of those books that walks you through the book of Jonah. And I mean... I'll quickly like fan through. You guys can see I highlighted <laughs> like a mad woman in here because it was so good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually read the review that I wrote and then discuss the book because these book reviews are hard to write. I mean, not write. They're they're hard to discuss because there's so much information in these books, and I don't like to ramble. I noticed in the last book review, which was the lies young women believe, I rambled on for a while. Though it was very helpful for you guys. I don't like to ramble too long. I know a lot of you guys prefer longer videos. Um, so I'm going to try to like do an in-between. But I'm going to read my review and then we're going to talk about this beautiful book because it's really, really beautiful. So um, I said, fantastic study of the book of Jonah. Anthony J. Carter did such an impeccable job diving into Jonah, relating him to Jesus and comparing the story to other stories in the Bible. A lot of the stuff I already knew from personal study of Jonah, but I truly enjoyed the insights he gave. Each chapter broke down a few verses and really went into Jonah as a person and God. He brought the focus away from the fish into God. Grace and mercy come from being God. I'm sorry. Grace and mercy come from a big God who runs after his people. No matter how many times we try to run from him, no matter how fast we think we are running, God is faster. I truly enjoyed every single page of this book and recommend it for those who have not yet studied the book of Jonah. It will open your eyes to depth to I'm sorry, to the depths of the book. If you have studied Jonah, this book will refresh your memory and give you new insight. Profound study of Jonah, truly loved and recommend. So I'm going to now read the back of the book and then discuss it with you guys. So it says, the story of Jonah the prophet is familiar to us. It's full of unforbid unforgettable images, ironic twists and turns, and dramatic encounters between humanity, nature, and God. Most importantly, it is a, it is a micro microcosm of the human story your story my story the story of jonah in these pages you will meet a prophet not so different from yourself the prophet's rebellious spirit is astounding but more astounding still is the surprising grace of god the same god who relentlessly pursued jonah and who relentlessly pursued the ninevites and pursued i'm sorry the same god who relentlessly pursued jonah and who relentlessly pursued the ninevites is pursuing you may this story cause you to rest in his unstoppable grace um so all I can say about this book is five stars, you guys. So this book is broken down by verses. Um, so like chapter one focuses on um, Jonah 1, 1 through 6. Um, then we have chapter three, which is like on verses 17 through chapter two, verse two. So like they're broken down like this. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. That's how it's broken down, which I think is really helpful because it's giving you bits and pieces of each section within the um, scriptures. And... Uh, there are study questions in the back, which I did not study. So when I read when I re read this book, I will do the study questions. There are study questions for each chapter, which I think is great. And they're really simple, like what is redemption? Um, was school good or bad or in different time for you? Jonah learned that God is big. What does God is big mean to you? Um, why is it good to know that God is bigger than you? So like really good questions that are good for journaling. Um, but this book here, whew, where do I begin? Where do I begin? <laughs> Um, I think, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if I read this during the time of the Bible study or after the Bible study. I read it around the time we did the Jonah Bible, stu Bible study. So if you haven't seen the Jonah Bible study, you can look at the on your screen and go to that video. But this book is broken down into seven chapters. The first chapter is Grace for the Rebellious. The second chapter is you can't outrun God, which I think is important to understand. We can never outrun him. Um, I've tried. <laughs> 
The third chapter is divine um, appointments. The fourth is true repentance. The fifth chapter is redemption. The sixth chapter is Jonah's resentment and God's restraint. And then the last chapter is our big God. Then you have obviously a preface, an introduction, the conclusion, the study notes, and then um, the study questions and then notes. Um, the conclusion is titled Mercy Came Running. So the whole point of this book is um, when we study the book of Jonah, or I know as a kid when they teach about the book of Jonah, they don't focus on God. They always focus on this whale, this big fish. That everyone thinks that the fish is a miracle, and it is a miracle. However, just like the book of Ruth is much more than just a love story between Boaz and Ruth, and it has more so to do with... Um, Boaz being looked at as Jesus and Ruth being looked at as you, you have to look at the story of Jonah with bigger eyes. And I never looked at it with bigger eyes until I actually got in depth with this study. Um, it takes the focus away from Jonah being in the well for three days, three nights. It takes that away. And it really just focuses on who Jonah is and how, um, how human he is. He was a rebellious prophet. That alone sounds ridiculous, like a prophet is not supposed to be rebellious. But instead of wanting to save the people of Nineveh, he decided in on his personal own on his personal own in his own personal mind I can't speak today. He decided on his own that these people were not worthy of being saved, okay? So there are times I'm pretty sure that we have come across people where we look at them and we're like, Yeah, that person doesn't need to be saved, that person and we're not purposely condemning them but mentally it just happens and um what i love is that mr carter here in this book he really makes you see jonah as a person even though he is a prophet and a lot of the times when people have these titles they look at these titles and take these titles for granted but in all actuality you're still a human so though he was a prophet of god he was still a human with real human emotions and real human habits he was rebellious he was judgmental, uh, you know, he was very bitter and angry, and you can see this throughout the book of Jonah. So I love that. It really just focuses on how God gives us grace when we're rebellious. I know I had my rebellious stage in high school and college, and I thank God for grace and mercy, because where I could have ended up, I probably would have been dead if it wasn't for God, honestly, you guys, because of the rebellious stage that I was in and the things that I was doing and partaking in. If it wasn't for the grace of God, and the grace that he provided me with um, willingly and without um, hesitation, I would not be here today, you guys. Like, honestly, I can tell you that I would not be here. So I really just love him um, in explaining that. Now, what I also love is that they go through definitions and is very biblical-based. There are scriptures on every single page. I mean, every single page is a scripture. I didn't tab it up, which I probably should have did. <laughs> but, um... For our God is, I mean, where it says our big God, he says that God is big is simply to say that God is sovereign, that God sees all things, knows all things, controls all things, and ordains all things. Like, that is something we need to understand. No matter the situation we're going through, our God is way bigger than that. He can handle it because he knows all things. He created all things. He is the source of everything. So therefore, if he's the source of everything and he knew us before we were formed in our mother's wombs, what's to say he can't um, help us? with the things that we think are not helpable, if that makes sense. Helpable? Is that even a word? <laughs> no. Um, it says God is bigger than your circumstances. God is bigger than your attitude. God is bigger than your concern, which I think is highly important for us to understand. You know, Jonah had a really nasty attitude. He did not want to say that in the rights. He was very bitter. He tried to run away. He tried to run away. And we talked about this in the study. So if you haven't watched it, like I said, click the on the screen to see that. But, um, he tried to run away. He had an attitude with God at the beginning. Then he was rebellious and doing what God asked him to. And then even when he did it and he, he changed lives, he still had a really nasty attitude. But God was bigger than that attitude that he had. There have been times when I've gotten an attitude. Trust me, when I, back, in the time, back in the days of my early 20s, I did not want to be in church at all. When I was forced to go to church, I had a major attitude. I was like, I don't want to go to church. I'd rather stay home. And I just wanted to stay home and be, you know, mope around and be depressed in my little, little stank funk. But um, it wasn't what God wanted. God was bigger than the attitude that I had. So I'm grateful for that because now I'm at the stage in life where I'm about to be ordained as an evangelist, where I'm a, where I'm willingly wanting to go to church. Like I get upset when I can't go to church, <laughs> you know, like I really get mad. And it's funny because when I lived, but like I literally used to live 
a few blocks from my church where we could walk to my church from my house. And I never wanted to go to church. And if I did go to church, I would go to the first service and like, I'm going home. Bye with my son. I'll leave. Now I live in a whole different state from my church. And I'm like, I want to be in church, which is amazing, right? Um, so I'm just picking different quotes from out of the book to talk about. It says that God has all power, yet he is patient. And I think that's great for us to understand. It says we are patient because we don't have any choice. If we have power to change the situation, we are often not so patient, which is true. If I have the power to give my, get myself a job, I would do it immediately. I wouldn't wait. There wouldn't be no patient. There'd, there'd be no, I'd get myself a job right now, but I don't have a choice but to be patient. And this walk with God is not something that we, um, it's not an instant gratification type of walk. You have to be patient in certain seasons. There are dry seasons. There are drought seasons. There are, you know, seasons when there is very little. Like, it, it's amazing. Um, It says that God, God meets our needs, which is so true. And then it talks about Psalms 46 and 1, where it says that um, it testifies of God's mercy towards us. God is your refuge. Um, God is your strength. He always is found in times of trouble. Um, it says, even in his anger, he is patient, which is so true. I'm pretty sure there are so many times when we have done something and um, there were consequences. And the consequences didn't even seem earthly, if that makes sense. Like, they, you knew they were like a divine consequence from God. Yet God was still patient. For me, he was patient through everything that I went through. Everything that I did. Everything that I knew was wrong, but was still partaking in and enjoying in. When I was smoking weed, he was patient. When I was out clubbing, partying with my friends, knowing that I shouldn't be doing that, he was patient. When I know that I should be in church, but I chose to stay home because I didn't want to go to church, he was patient. His patience goes a mile. Like, it's it's amazing. Um, this book really just, it takes apart Jonah. And I'm, I'm trying to find the page. I found it earlier now. I can't find it. Where they compare Jonah to different um, people within the Bible. Here it is. Um... He really just uh, compares him to Jesus a lot, in a sense. And I talked about this in the Bible study, how Jonah and Jesus are parallel in story, but different at the same time, right? Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and to tell them to repent so that they can be redeemed, restored, saved, and all that. Jonah didn't want to do that. You know, he felt in his heart like they were a pagan, they, they were a pagan nation, they were a terrible nation in his mind, they didn't need to be saved. You know, he felt as a prophet, he was above that, which you're not supposed to feel that way. Whereas you have Jesus, who, God, he knew he was going to die, okay? He knew he was going to die, and he willingly still went out and did the work of God. He willingly still went out and gave the message of love. He willingly gave the message of salvation. He willingly died for us and he he knew it was coming he knew he was gonna die he knew he was gonna be betrayed by judas but um he still went and did the things that he was supposed to do whereas jonah was very rebellious you know and there are not many there's not many of us who will be like jesus and be like okay i'm willing to die i mean we say we're willing to die but the question is are you truly willing to give your life up for another the way jesus did I know for me, I say it, and then sometimes I'm just like, well, I don't know about that. Do I, do I really have what it takes to literally put my life on the line for someone else? Now, I know there are a lot of people who go on missions willingly knowing that they might die when they get to these countries. And that is amazing. Like, they, they exemplify the life of Christ when they do that. I don't think I have the strength to do that because that is very scary to go somewhere where I know that I could lose my life. Right. I, in a sense, would be like Jonah, like, I don't know if I want to go do that. You know, I'd be rebellious in a sense. Um, but I mean, this book is just it's so good. I, I don't know how to even talk about it. So this I think this one talks about the fish. Yeah, um, it says that, um, you know, the fish was salvation was the salvation of God for Jonah. A lot of the times we look at the fish as being the biggest thing with the story of Jonah, him being swallowed by the fish. But um, the fish was salvation, okay? It wasn't just something that got popped up as a miracle. There was salvation in that, that fish, you know? Jonah could have been thrown overboard and drowned. 
he could have been thrown overboard and eaten by a shark. <laughs> you know, there are so many different ways he could have died after being thrown overboard. He could have hit his head on a rock. He could have gotten tangled up in something. But no. Immediately after he was thrown overboard, there was a giant fish that swallowed him whole for three nights. Three days and three nights, I think it is. And um, that fish was salvation because within that fish, he repented to God. He prayed to God. Um, so sometimes the salvation we seek can be really minute or it can be bigger than what we it can be big to the point where it it kind of makes us nervous i mean i'm pretty sure when he was in his fish's belly he was a little concerned <laughs> i mean this is a huge fish you can be digested you never know but the fish then spit him out that was God giving him a second chance. So the fish was salvation. The fish was um, him getting a chance to repent. The fish was him getting a chance at a second chance, if that makes sense. Um, then it talks about true repentance, which I believe this is when he, yeah, him praying within um, the fish's belly. And it talks about repentance. It says that repentance is essential to the gospel. The gospel is never faithfully proclaimed or understood apart from the call to repent. Um, and then it talks about the different ministries and preachings and stuff of repentance. John the Baptist, Jesus, the disciples, Paul, um, I think Peter. No, not Peter. Um, and then it tells you like a definition. Pen repentance is godly sorrow. Godly sorrow over our sin coming from the conviction of the Holy Spirit, making us aware that we have offended God. Um, and then it says, having this conviction, we desire to turn from sin in obedience to turn to God in our thoughts and actions. Um, then it gives like a theological definition, which is a sincere desire to forsake sin and walk in obedience to Christ. And uh, I mean, it's um, here we go. True repentance begins with acknowledging your sin. And then before God used Jonah, God would bring Jonah to the end of himself. So at the beginning of Jonah, Jonah was all about himself. Pretty much, you know, even as a prophet, he was about himself and not really doing the work of God. God spoke to him and gave him a mission. He gave him a job, a message to do. Jonah didn't want to do that. He was like, nah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Pretty much, literally tried to run away, got on a boat, put other lives in jeopardy. Like, I'm, I don't want to preach this, preach this, oh Lord. <laughs> not preach. I don't want to teach this um, because we went through it in the live Bible study sessions if we haven't seen it. But, um... You know, I put that before he can use me, I need to be at the end of myself so he can work. We always say we want to be used by God. But the question is, are you willing to let go of yourself? Are you willing to die of yourself? Are you willing to be completely used by God to edify, to teach, to preach, to evangelize, to gather people, to bring people into the kingdom? I know before I used to say, yeah, I want to be used. And um, the only time I really would let myself be used was when I was dancing, you know, uh, when I was doing liturgical dance. Now I'm at a point where I am fully ready to be used by God, to die of myself every single day so that God can fully use me in the capacity that he needs to use me, be it through the YouTube videos, be it through Facebook, be it through Instagram, be it through within the church, be it be it me hanging outside somewhere and someone looking at me and asking a question or wanting to have a conversation, you know? So, um, I, I don't want this video to be too long because it's, it's a lot. Um, then it goes into the tale of the two kings. I mean, it really goes through different parts of the Bible. It doesn't just focus on Jonah. It is a study through Jonah, but it goes through different books within the Bible in the Old Testament. It brings, um, some things to light about Jesus and, uh, Paul in the New Testament and I highly highly enjoyed this book I really loved it so much I will be I, I need to tab it I haven't tab it though like I said I've highlighted in this entire book the entire book is highlighted in I just need to tab the book I just never got a chance to tab the book so yeah <laughs> um we have this and I do recommend it if you're if you like the book of Jonah if you have studied the book of Jonah if you haven't studied the book of Jonah I definitely would say get running for mercy it's really great it's definitely informative and it definitely will give you new insights that you never thought of um again like i said for me i always looked at the fish the whale i don't even know why we call it a whale because the bible never calls him a whale if you notice like we take things and make it what we want like with the forbidden fruit for some reason everybody just thinks it's an apple but is it really an apple we don't know what that forbidden fruit was because it doesn't say it in the bible and um i don't know there's just so many things i'm learning as i really become a true student of the word you know i i used to 
read the Bible and then I started studying the Bible but now I find myself becoming a true student of the word like I'm going in depth like it's amazing like so good this, this book is so good um so I highly recommend it I will leave links to Amazon down below for the Kindle book the paperback I think I think there's an audiobook I'm not sure but if there is that'll be linked down below I'll leave links to christianbook.com as well as to um if you have iTunes Google I mean iTunes for Apple people um Google Play if you have Android and other links if I can find them it'll be linked down below um I highly recommend it it's such an, an informative book and it really just walks you through the book of Jonah and gives you an eyesight I read this one chapter a day so that literally takes you can read one chapter a day and complete it in a week you can read two chapters a day and finish it like four days however you choose to read it um it's not what is it long let's see yeah the chapters are pretty long <laughs> pretty few you know like 20 30 20 to 30 pages i would say yeah 20 to 30 pages um they are they are very meaty but um it's such an easy read for you to just flow through it though it's really meaty um and like i said i was in i was writing in the margins of my book and stuff like that so Running for Mercy, I highly recommend. It's a really good book by Anthony J. Carter. It focuses on the book of Jonah, and it's kind of like reading a Bible study without it feeling like a Bible study, though it is a Bible study, if that makes sense. Um, I highly recommend it. Links will be down below. My written book review will be also down below. And um, I think that's it for this video, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!